I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we will consider inverse of quadratic function. Well, you have seen many examples, but here is one in which we have the equation in the standard form. We are going to sketch the graph using factored form and then also find the inverse using the vertex form. So in this particular video, you are going to see how the three forms of quadratic equations are related. Basically, standard form, factored form, and vertex form. So let's begin with the function itself, which is given to us as f of x equals to x square minus 4x plus 3. We are going to sketch the inverse of this function, okay, and also the graph of the function, and then we'll find the vertex form and then find the inverse algebraically. Make sense? Well, in case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Let's begin by sketching the graph of the function given to us. We are given that f of x is equal to x square minus 4x plus 3. Now this can be factored. 3 times 1, both negative, will give us minus 4. And so we can write this as x minus 3 times x minus 1. And that gives us two x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are at 3 and 1, right? So let me mark these two points on the graph, the x-intercepts at 3 and 1. Now let's find the axis. Axis will be at x equals to 3 plus 1 divided by 2. Add them and find the average, which is at 2. So we'll sketch the axis, x equals to 2, midway between the two x-intercepts, right? So that is x equals to 2. Now, how do you find the vertex? Well, vertex is a point on this axis, right? In this case, this vertex has to be a minimum. Since the graph or the parabola, which represents the quadratic function, is going to open up. So we'll find the value of the function at 2. Substituting 2 in the factored form will give us 2 minus 3 times 2 minus 1. And that is minus 1 times plus 1, and that is minus 1. So we get the vertex at minus 1, correct? Well, we can now continue sketching the graph from here. These three are indeed the critical points, correct? Step functions, you remember, first step, 1, and then 3. So 1, 2, 3 should be a next point, correct? From the symmetry, that will be at 3. So let me just continue this graph and sketch the parabola as shown here, right? Okay. So let's make a better... Okay, I think that seems to be okay. So that is the function f of x. Now once you have the function which we have sketched using the factored form, found the x-intercepts, the average value gave us the axis, and the y value at the axis is the vertex, which is the minimum in this particular case. Now the idea is how do we sketch the inverse of a function from there itself? Well, the inverse really means that x and y quadrants will swap. So here we have 2 minus 1, right? So this point here is basically 2 minus 1. We'll now look for a point which is minus 1, 2. So that is going to be the vertex of the inverse of this particular function. Well, inverse will not be a function since, you know, parabola fails horizontal line test. Now let's take these two critical points. One is at 1, 0, which means 0, 1 is the next point, And the other one is at 3, 0. That means that will be our next point. So we do have these 
critical points which can help us sketch the inverse of this particular function. Well, in case you need more, 0, 3 is a good point to work with. And that means 3, 0, right? So 3, 0. And similarly, we have a point here which is 4, 3. And that means 3, 4 is another good point to work with, right? So 3, 4. So connecting these points, we have our inverse function graph. Make sense? So that is the inverse of the function given to us. See how with the factored form we sketch the graph of the parabola and then swapping the coordinate points of the function we got the inverse of the function. Clear? Now let's work on the concept here. What we found here is that the function itself had a vertex at 1 minus at 2 minus 1, right? That was the function. Right. So let me just uh, re-sketch it. It was done in green, so let me just do it in green, right? So what you see here is that the minimum value is minus 1. So the domain of this particular function is basically x belongs to real numbers. However, the range for the function is y belongs to real numbers, where y is greater than or equal to minus 1. Now, the inverse of the function we sketched by swapping the points to minus 1 became minus 1, 2, right? And so, sketching this was kind of like this. Okay, so that was the inverse. You can clearly see that for the inverse, the domain and range, as expected, has swapped. So, the range now is restricted the domain domain now is restricted right so the domain of this function is x belongs to real numbers where x is greater than or equal to minus 1 do you see that so the range part becomes the domain clear as far as the range is concerned of the inverse we find that y becomes e for all real numbers Right? No restriction for the range, right? So now we have sketched domain, we have sketched the function and the inverse of the function using factored form, correct? Let's now look into the inverse using vertex form. So part three of this particular question was write f of x, x squared minus 4x plus 3 in the vertex form find the inverse algebraically. Let's do this part now, right? I hope the concepts are absolutely clear. Well, in case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Okay, so let's find the vertex. We are given the function f of x equals to x squared minus 4x plus 3. We are going to complete the squares. That is to say that we'll add half of 4 square, right? Which is 2 square. And we'll subtract the same thing, right? First three terms form a perfect square, which will be x minus 2 whole square. And we have minus 4 plus 3. And when we add minus 4 and 3, what do we get? Well, we get minus 1. And there you go. We have the vertex. Perfect. So we have got the function in the vertex form. And clearly, this function is a parabola, which opens up with the vertex at 2 minus 1. Clear? So that is the vertex form. Now let's find the inverse of this particular function using this vertex form which is x minus 2 whole square minus 1. So we have the function now in the vertex form which is x minus 2 whole square minus 1. Well, to find the inverse, we'll swap x and y. So let me rewrite this in replacing f of x with y, right? And then we are going to swap x and y. And now we are going to isolate y, right? So x plus 1, and here we get y minus 2 whole square. Let's take square root on both the sides. Then we get y minus 2 
is equal to x plus 1. Let me rewrite this. So we get y minus 2 equals to square root of x plus 1. And whenever we do that, we have to take plus and minus, right? And so we get y equals to 2 plus minus square root of x plus 1. So that becomes the inverse of the function. So we're writing this as inverse as 2 plus minus square root of x plus 1. Indeed, this is not a function. For different values of x, we have two values of y, right? But of course, this opens on the right-hand side with the vertex at minus 1, 2. Clear? So that is how you could actually sketch the inverse of the function after getting the vertex form. So I hope the whole concept is absolutely clear. Perfect. So with that, we come to an end of this particular video where we learned quite a few things. We started with the function in standard form, factored, found the x-intercepts, and then sketched the function, right? Once we sketched the function, we swapped the points and sketched the inverse. So strictly speaking, sometimes you don't have to find the inverse function equation. You can sketch it directly from the graph. Perfect. And then we also looked into how do we convert it into vertex form and then find the inverse algebraically. Note, to find the inverse algebraically, the quadratic equation should be in the vertex form. If not given, write it in that form. Perfect. Using completing the squares method. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comment, share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.